Confident Computing number 802, Preparing for the Ultimate Disaster. You know, I try to maintain a fairly positive outlook on life in general, but also on technology. I think it's all pretty cool and pretty exciting. These are some scary times. And in recent weeks, I've been pulling some articles from uh, Ask Leo to feature that I think are important or timely with respect to everything that's going on around us. This week's article is about basically what happens if you've got yourself wonderfully secure. You've done all the right things when it comes to keeping your accounts secure. You've got two-factor authentication. Nobody is going to get in without your authorization. What happens if somebody needs to? What happens if somebody with a legitimate need needs to access your accounts? And the scenario, of course, that's coming to mind these days is with the virus, what happens if you get too sick to deal with your computer? Heaven forbid, what happens if you pass away? What will the people you leave behind be left to deal with? So check out Preparing for the Ultimate Disaster. Also this week, we've noted an increase in the, in the amount of spam that's coming around, uh, specifically targeted not just at the coronavirus epidemic, but basically just malware in general, trying to take advantage of all the people that are at home using their technology, perhaps more frequently or more often than they're used to in the past. So definitely have a look at why is there so much malware? Why does malware exist? We're also going to look at what happens if you're using an open Wi-Fi hotspot? Can the owner of that hotspot see what you're up to? The answer, of course, is it depends. It depends on how you're connected, what kinds of things you're doing, and of course, on the technical acumen of the owner of that hotspot. The short answer is they have access to a lot and there may be steps you need to take. Finally this week, how do I back up? With my new machine, which has been working wonderfully, by the way, one of the things I had to do was, of course, reestablish a new backup regimen for that machine. I talk about backing up so often, but this is where I put my words or put my actions where my words are. This is what I do. Some of it is absolutely the kind of thing that you should be doing. Some of it, well, it's a little bit geekier than that. Also this week, we had a great TEH podcast earlier this week. I hope you have a chance to listen to. Gary and I talked about a lot of different things, some coronavirus related, of course, since that does seem to be the topic of the day. But we also were able to talk about some of the new Apple product releases and what kind of got me excited sounded, sounds pretty mundane, but the fact that I was able to repair my uh, uh, dryer without, you know, while being in this quarantine or stay safe at home scenario is actually a pretty good example of the internet and a number of other pieces of things working together and working well. Finally, I've been talking a lot about doing live webinars. I've experimented a couple of times with using YouTube and Facebook Live and a couple of other technologies. Basically, I've done experimenting and I've settled on a bit of a plan. What I'm going to do for now is twice a week. Right now it's Wednesdays and Saturdays at 2 p.m. Pacific time, both days. I'm going to get onto YouTube Live and I will demonstrate something. Uh, the topics that I'd be demonstrating, of course, I'd love to hear from you what might be valuable to you. But the idea is that in real time, being able to respond to your questions as they come in, I'm going to demonstrate doing something that I think is important or difficult or interesting, something that you need to know and would benefit from actually seeing someone else walk through. So that's going to happen twice a week. It'll be live. Right now, um, I haven't decided yet on exactly how the recordings are going to be distributed. They will be distributed. Don't get me wrong. In fact, one of the th nice things about YouTube is that they will just keep a recording of the, of the event uh, on YouTube itself. I may do some more things with those recordings and polish them up a little bit and provide them in some different ways. But the short answer is if you're not unable to make the time for the live recording, you will be able to uh, watch the archive. Of course, if you can show up live because that way you'll have an opportunity to ask your questions in real time as I'm going through things. I think that's about it for this week. Quite a full week. This is Confident Computing number 802, preparing for the ultimate disaster. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the newsletter. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care.